All right, welcome everyone to the Identity Implementers Working Group call for June 2nd, 2022. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Shar Howland. Um, today we are going back to the usual order of announcements um, and then working group updates um, for the first half and then a presentation from the Firefly team, um, Peter Broadhurst, Jim Zhang, and Nick Geyer during the second half of the call. And as usual, since this is a Hyperledger call, we are following the antitrust policy and the Hyperledger code of conduct. conduct. Uh, there's more information here if you'd um, like to learn more, but basically we are collaborators in this space and we don't discuss anything confidential or, or proprietary. Um, but of course, as usual, if you do have something able to be publicly shared that you'd like to talk about, whether that's in a working group update or a presentation, um, you're very encouraged to jump in. And if you do have a presentation idea, just let me know and we can schedule you in for a future call. Uh, this call is being recorded and I will post the recording up on the meeting page later today. Um, so we can go ahead with um, announcements. Um, today, we are joined by Tim Spring, who will be a co-moderator of this working group uh, with me. Thanks for joining us, Tim. Um, would you like to take a minute to introduce yourself? Sure thing. Um, hi, my name is Tim. I'm a uh, marketing manager at Indicio, and I look forward to helping Shar uh, book some interesting speakers for the group and uh, also work on uh, growing our numbers a little bit. So looking forward to it. Great. Thanks for being here, Tim. Um, let's see. Another announcement that we have is the third Cardia Interopathon uh, coming up two weeks from today. There are links here with more information. Um, and this is an opportunity for companies and organizations um, building on the Hyperledger Indian Aries code bases to meet and test their solutions against each other and, um, and against a reference implementation of Cardia. Um, they can even bring their own networks. Um, so this is a, a really great way um, to figure out if you have any bugs in your build and fix them. Um, so here is a link to register as well. Um, and then with that, we can move on to introductions. Um, would anybody like to introduce themselves if you're new or rejoining uh, the call or just would like to say a few words about yourself and, and why you're interested in this space? Yeah, I'll say hello. This is more of a reintroduction. I used to come to this meeting a couple of years ago, I think it was occasionally. It's been a while. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm working on uh, Aries from framework JavaScript with the uh, Animo guys, Timo and the others. I've been doing that for the last six months, implementing AIP2. Uh, and the reason we're doing that is because I'm working with uh, Ontario and uh, BC Gov to do the Ontario uh, the digital wallet uh, rollout uh, implementation that they're doing there. So all exciting stuff. So I thought I'd come along to this uh, meeting specifically because it's nice to actually um, see people actually using this technology in, in terms of demos and, and sort of uh, business use cases, which is something I'm very much interested in. So um, hello again to everybody, if you don't know me. That's it for me. Yeah. yeah, thanks for introducing yourself, Mike. We're, we're really glad you're here. No worries. Um, my name is Sean Bohan. I am one of the community architects on Hyperledger, and I'm changing my name instead of TSC OpenIDL. Um, formerly worked on Indie. Uh, and Aries uh, back in 2017 through 2019. And I uh, recently joined Hyperledger and I've come to a couple of these and I'm super happy to be here. And it's also here with the, the Firefly team who's been working on with it. So it's going to be fun. Great. Thanks for introducing yourself, Sean. All right. Anybody else would like to introduce themselves? I guess folks from the Firefly team could introduce ourselves because this would be our first time joining this working group as far as I know as well. Uh, my name is Nico Geyer. I'm uh, a maintainer on the Fire Hyperledger Firefly project. Uh, I'm also sort of the uh, open source community lead. So, uh, you know, love meeting new people in the community, in, uh, in especially in the, in the broader Hyperledger community and uh, happy to be here today. Thanks. Great, thanks for being here, Nico. I guess I... I'm working I think... on 
I think we lost you for a minute. Peter, would you mind repeating that? Or at least my connection cut out. Oh, sorry about that. Is that better now? Yes, now I can hear you. Super. Um, so one of the core engineers working on, on, um, on Firefly um, work, um, actually, uh, as, as well as Jim and Nico, we actually all are part of a, a um, company called Kaleido, um, which has been uh, focused on enterprise, um, sort of unblocking enterprises from adopting blockchain technologies um, through as a service infrastructure, but also through building a stack that, that um, uh, resulted in us contributing the, the seeds of seeds of Firefly. And, and certainly um, the code base there has been evolving for the last three and a half years that I've been involved in, um, in it. So really, really keen to um, share a little bit about it today um, and also talk about where there's overlap um, and potential uh, for, um, for the Firefly project to work with identity ecosystems. Hey, uh, Jim, Jim Zhang here, um, another maintainer of uh, Firefly, uh, specifically work uh, focusing on uh, features uh, uh, involving Fabric support. Um, and before this, uh, when I was with IBM, um, uh, I was a <clears throat> one of the maintainers of uh, Hyperledger Fabric. <clears throat> Looking forward to, uh, I've always paid attention to the great work uh, the Indy and Aries uh, communities have been doing in the DID space. So looking forward to uh, having more discussions with you guys. Great, thanks Thanks for introducing yourselves, Jim and Peter. We're, we're super glad you're here and um, look forward to hearing more from you in the second half of the call. So thank you. All right. Um, with that, uh, it would be great if, if you all would be willing to put your name down on the attendees list, just so we can keep track. Um, I just sent out the link to this wiki. Um, but with that, are there any announcements that I'm missing or anything else anybody wants to say before we move into working group updates? All right, then let's move on to working group reports. Um, so the, and we'll start with, um, Hyperledger, the main identity working group. Uh, we've reported on them in previous meetings. Um, so we can move on to the Indie contributors call. Um, I had actually to miss this call. Did anybody attend who'd like to report? Looks like they're uh, still making a call for resources on implementing the Ubuntu 20.04 upgrade. So if anybody is interested in helping out on some with them, Technical assistance there, I'm sure that'd be appreciated. Uh, let's see. Aries working group call. Um, how about this one? Anybody attend this one who'd like to report? They have mainly been um, going over machine readable governance updates and um, an AI PD2 update. All right, the Bifold user group. Um, they've been working on an async ledger issuance bug in iOS releases and tab navigation configuration discussion. Um, in the Aries Cloud Agent Python um, working group. Um, I, I usually attend this one, but had to miss this one as well this week. Um, but they are still working on getting to the release of um, Akapai 074. I think we've we've we now have two uh, or release candidate two um, that we are validating against, and I think um, the next thing will be the official release. So that's really exciting. Still figuring out exactly which PRs are going in. All right, Aries Framework Go. Um, is anybody involved in this group who'd like to report? like in their last uh, few meetings, they mainly went over some work updates. For um, Aries framework JavaScript, um, how about this one? Anybody would like to report who's involved? Let's 
So they've mainly been focusing on out of band did exchange um, issue credential v2 uh, fixes and the JSON LD credential support update, among other things. But Mike, if you'd like to jump in, that'd be great. Um, that's all pretty much still the case. What I would say is the focus uh, at the moment is really on getting the present proof version two over the line. Uh, so issue credential and present proof version two, the sort of two halves of the AIP2. Uh, equation uh, issue credentials v2 is pretty much done uh, and now I'm going to be sort of focusing well me and the other guys uh, will be focusing amongst other things on um, present proof version 2 uh, which is a presidential uh, presentation exchange uh, and that kind of stuff which is full a little bit behind there's also a big drive which we had a meeting earlier today on getting um, some cool documentation done for the ARIS framework JavaScript which is some work that's in progress as well Mm, great. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's good to hear. Thanks for that update. All right. Uh Hyperledger Ursa. Uh I don't believe they've met since we last reported on them. Are there that's all the Hyperledger groups that we follow? Are there any other Hyperledger updates that anybody would like to give? Hey Shards, Jim, how are you today? Pretty good. How are you? Good, good. Um, I noticed we kind of jumped from URSA to Trust Over IP Foundation. I'll go in and, and edit this directly. But we do have uh, two uh, identity projects uh, now launched with um, um, kind of in conjunction with Hyperledger, but they're listed as independent LF projects. Number one, everyone's probably familiar with Bedrock. Bedrock name is now being retired. It's officially going to be known as Dedenium. Um, which is a play on DID and it also is the 119th element on the periodic table or something like that. That includes participation from IDM, USAA, State Farm, um, Centara Health Systems in, in Virginia, um, Dayon and, uh, and a couple others. And I'll, I'll put this all in the notes and we'll be looking at a use case around exchange, a, creden a credential exchange where uh, USAA members um, exchange credentials for uh, health information to be able to do uh, life insurance actuarial calculations for life insurance policies. And then we'll be moving to other ones, but it'll demonstrate both HL7 fire and health data in conjunction with verifiable credentials on a Indy Aries uh, Trinsic uh, open source stack. Uh, and then the second one is the IAM project, IAM capital letters, which is a DOD project where we'll be looking at uh, also doing something using an uh, potentially an indie airy stack, maybe with some carry sprinkled in um, around credential exchange around a um, uh, either a custodial or non custodial wallet. Uh, and the idea will be various use cases where, say, a DoD service member can use their credentials to access uh, the non classified network for zero trust architecture and also use their credentials associated again with USAA for service member insurance. Uh, or to obtain healthcare under under Tricare Prime at uh, Centara Health. So those are all being fleshed out, very preliminary, but they are two new independent identity projects in LF. Great, great. Thanks for those updates on on both of those projects. Um, and feel free to either update the wiki or send um, send information or links in the chat, uh, whatever is easiest for you. So thank you for jumping in with those. Sure, absolutely. All right. In the Trust Over IP Foundation, um, they had their last all members meeting just before our last meeting two weeks ago. Um, looks like they, they mainly went over um, EIC updates and then updates from all the working groups, which we are about to go over. Um, let's see, in the steering committee, um, they met Recently, um, looks like they mainly shared updates for upcoming events and special topic presenters across our working groups. Did anybody attend this meeting would like to report on it? All right, we can go into the specific working groups. Um, communications committee mainly went over blog posts. There was one that was just posted um, on decentralized identity, keys to mainstream adoption. Um, anybody involved in this group who would like to report? Uh, 
All right, in the governance stack, um, they got an update regarding the governance template documents um, for use at all layers with the primary documentation companion guide. Um, and they also have a uh, governance 101 webinar um, from conception through governance documentations. Um, but Kyle, did you want to jump in? Yeah, yeah, I just have an update on that one. So um, uh, we had a good meeting yesterday with the task force leaders um, for the governance layers um, with Scott. And so we're doing a bit of a pivot actually. Um, and there'll be more information coming shortly on that. Um, it really, it just comes down to the templating of the governance documentation we want to put forth. Um, <clears throat> and there is supposed to be a meeting today, but I think Scott is canceling it. Um, so you can look for, if you're planning to attend, look for that uh, update. Yeah, great. Thanks for, thanks for letting us know about that. All right, the technology stack working group. Um, their current focus is the TOIP uh, architect or technology architecture specification B1. Um, they've developed a generalized reference architecture for defining the four layers of the technology stack. Um, and they're currently in the process of adding the details and requirements necessary to complete the V1 spec. Let's see, the utility foundry group. Um, again, their focus is the public utility directory. Um, they're also working on a framework for evaluating layer one utilities, um, which is an overview document. Um, they're also collaborating, um, working on a new co collaboration to focus on layer one governance. And let's see, the ecosystem foundry group. They're working with the governance stack working group to combine what they're doing at the ecosystem level with, with what's happening at the um, governance level. And then they've reported that the biological ecosystem white paper is almost complete. And then concepts and terminology, um, they're working on, on the TOIP core uh, to backfill uh, the TOIP core and GovStack uh, working group glossaries. Um, all right, any, any other TOIP updates that anybody would like to give? All right, we can move on to the DIF. Uh, we'll start with the DIDCOM working group. Is anybody involved in this group who'd like to report on these last several meetings? All right, they've mainly been working on this context update PR and then a discussion on um, adding a, a size specification for DIDCOM messages. Um, there is a link if you'd like to learn more about that. Um, the DIDCOM users group, Again, this is the, the unsync meeting that is held over a 24 hour period. Um, they reported that the DIDCOM V2 spec was fin uh, formally finished on Monday. Um, it's working group approved, um, which is as far as the standard um, goes at the diff they reported. So that's exciting. Uh, let's see, diff interoperability group. They've had some recent meetings canceled, but their next meeting will be um, June 8th. So we will report on that in our next meeting. Any other diff updates? All right, Sovereign Foundation, as far as I know, they have not met since early February, uh, but definitely let me know if I am um, missing information there. And then we can um, finish up with the W3C standard um, in the DID working group. Um, I don't believe they've met since we last reported um, with the community credentials group. Um, looks like their May 31st meeting was canceled, but does anybody have any 
um, W3C standard working group um, update or any working group updates in general to, to finish off with before we move on to the presentation. You know, Char, I apologize for going backwards, but on the sovereign side, um, it, it, it probably worth, and I can add this too, if you want, just including the SSI and IOT working group under sovereign, we meet on a weekly basis, though it's canceled this week. And, uh, and I think we've been progressing uh, pretty well in terms of both building proofs of concept for um, uh, Hyperledger Indian Aries ported to, to Rust to be able to use at the, at the device level, at the IoT level, as well as just academically exploring and promoting the concepts of, of verifiable credentials as part of um, IoT zero trust architecture concepts too. So, so that's one I'm happy to report on. Okay, great. Yeah, it sounds like things are going really well, I will, I will make sure to add that in so that we are reporting on that regularly. So thank you. All right, any other working group updates that anybody would like to share? All right, thanks everybody who jumped in with updates from projects they're involved in. I really appreciate it. Um, I think with that, uh, we can turn it over to Peter, Jim, and Nico. You should be able to grab the screen share if you'd like, but um, I'll pass it off to you and look forward to hearing your presentation. Great, thank you very much, Char. Um, so I, I think I'm gonna kick things off. I'm just gonna give a, so quick, quick agenda of kind of what we wanted to go through. Uh, I'm just gonna give a, a very brief, very brief, overview of what Firefly is, uh, what the project is, how it's used, and kind of the uh, a brief snapshot of the roadmap of what we're working on currently. And then uh, that will kind of segue into Peter talking about how identity works in uh, within Firefly. And uh, then hopefully from there, we could kind of open it up and, uh, and have discussion about it. So uh, my, my other disclaimer is that uh, before about a couple hours ago this morning, I didn't realize this was going to be a presentation. <laughs> I was thinking it was more of a conversation. So, um, so th there's my disclaimer. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen because I, I do have some slides to go through here and uh, we'll jump right in. So uh, just kind of want to give folks, if you're not familiar with the Firefly project, uh, like I said, a very brief overview of what it is. Uh, I could talk for a really long time about this, but I'm going to try to keep this short. So we describe Hyperledger Firefly as a super node. And it, it, we describe that as a, a complete stack for enterprises to build and scale secure Web3 applications. So uh, what, what does that mean? Well, that means Firefly is not a DLT. It, it sits a layer above the blockchain. And it is a, a platform that you can build Web3 blockchain powered apps on top of. So uh, what, what does that give you as, as a developer? What's the, the benefit? When you look at the landscape of open source projects, you know, there's a, a lot of projects down kind of at the at this low level of uh, of, of blockchains, DLTs, uh, all these you know tools for for doing stuff on the blockchain. Now, that's great. Uh, there's there's lots of uh, you know there's there may be lots of stuff at the top layer too. You know where you, you have your your user interface and there's there's lots of great open source frameworks for building flashy, cool web apps. But if you want to build an enterprise Web3 application, there's all kinds of things that sit in between those layers that you have to build. And one of the things, as Peter was saying, this is um, Firefly sort of came out of the journey of Kaleido. Uh, you know, at Kaleido, as we built more and more Web3 applications, we realized that, hey, the, all these applications need it, the same or very similar set of plumbing and pipes and connections to, to different things uh, and messaging buses and uh, event management and all this stuff that sort of sits in between these layers that lets you build a, a really robust enterprise Web3 app that can scale and is secure and is ready for enterprise production. So that's that's what Hyperledger Firefly does. It's, it's meant to fill this gap to give you uh, a common platform with a, uh, an easy, concise set of APIs that you can build an application on. So, so it sits, like I said, a, a layer above the blockchain itself. 
and uh, lets the developer focus on the thing that's really of ultimate value to their business, which is solving their business problem. So the developers can focus on the, the logic of their, of their business app. Uh, they don't have to spend time thinking about, well, how do I actually get data from you know, this, this one piece of our network architecture over here, over to here? Firefly handles all those things, has connections for all those things. So what's in the box? Um, we can sort of think about Firefly in uh, kind of providing three major categories of, of things that allow you to build apps, flows, and digital assets. And I'll kind of break down what each of these are in just a minute. Uh, so so the, those are like the main sets of things that it lets you do and build. Uh, those are powered by the Firefly core. The Firefly core is uh, has an orchestration engine in it that is sort of the, the brain and the connector and the, the organizer for, for all of these different systems that it's connecting. And what are all those systems? Well, there's, there's obviously a blockchain node. There is a, a shared storage service. There is a, a private data bus for privately exchanging data. Uh, Firefly Core has its own database where it's keeping track of state of the network, of things on the chain, and also its own internal state as well. Um, all of this, of course, is uh, done with uh, security. You know, this, is, this is enterprise ready. So there's, you know, there's security running through all of these layers. Uh, there's also a really robust set of tools that we kind of have on the chart over here. Uh, there's a, an SDK for Node.js that's written in TypeScript, so it has great type definitions. There are more SDKs coming. Uh, that's the one that we have today readily available on npmjs.com. There is a command line interface that can be used to create a local development environment on your machine that will start all this stuff up and lets you play with it uh, with just a few commands. And obviously there's, there's a fantastic API for, for all of this stuff. Uh, there is a, a web UI, the Explorer, I forgot to mention here up at the top, uh, the Explorer is a, a fantastic user interface that lets you see what's going on inside Firefly. And, and all of this is designed in a uh, cloud native, modern distributed architecture uh, in mind. So it's, it's meant to run in Kubernetes. It has Prometheus monitoring built right in and, uh, and, and it's great. So uh, let's kind of break down kind of these apps, flows and digital assets and describe uh, a little bit more in detail what we mean on each of those. So uh, one of the really cool features that Firefly has is that it will let you build uh, HTTP APIs from smart contracts. So you can import a, a custom smart contract. Uh, if it's Ethereum, you could provide an Ethereum ABI and Firefly will generate on the fly an API for it. So it, it lets you um, sort of rapidly build uh, integrations and applications. It, it also um, stores information about the uh, about the, the API on the chain and could broadcast that to other parties as well. So other you can inform other parties about uh, a certain contract that's on chain. And there's some, some really cool features there, including the ability to uh, subscribe to events being emitted by those contracts, uh, to index those events and be able to query them and uh, get state out of the, the contract as well, all through Firefly's API. Um, Firefly is uh, one of the, the main use cases for it. And, and this is a, a use case that is, is growing. There's a lot of functionality being built into it right now is uh, to use it as a Web3 gateway. And what do we mean by that? So uh, for example, if an enterprise has, uh, they want to build a, an app powered by blockchain, uh, but they need to have a control point or a one point in their IT infrastructure that is, can communicate with a public chain, for instance, communicate outside the business network. That needs to be in a, in a very specific area of the network, Firefly can, can fill that role. So Firefly becomes the, the gateway to uh, the Web3 world in the same way that an internet gateway is a mechanism for uh, applications inside a network to reach out to systems outside of the private business network. Uh, Firefly can act in the same role for the Web3 world. Uh, so, uh, and, and this can go both ways as well. So everything uh, coming to and from the blockchain goes through Firefly and to a, a Web3 app. Um, so, so this provides a, a lot of power for businesses. Uh, one of the other use cases or um, 
or sort of usage patterns, I should say, that is, it's, it's much broader than, than a specific use case, but it's, what we describe as a usage pattern is uh, for uh, consortiums or multi-party networks as we refer to them as sometimes. So, uh, and this was, this was really like one of the, the very first usage patterns that was built out robustly in Firefly. So a lot of the demos that you, if you've seen a demo already of Firefly, it was probably the, the consortium multi-party usage pattern demo where you have multiple organizations that are interacting with each other through the blockchain. They're broadcasting data throughout the whole organization, hashing it, pinning it to the blockchain. Uh, maybe they're privately sharing uh, more sensitive pieces of data directly between members. And they can perform transactions with, with custom smart contracts as well. And so Firefly allows these uh, consortiums of, of businesses to, to build a, a network powered by blockchain to perform business transactions with each other uh, all through the chain. Okay, and that, that third box was digital assets. So Firefly also comes out of the box with really robust uh, APIs for tokens, uh, which are one of the fundamental building blocks of a Web3 app, of a blockchain app. Uh, tokens could be uh, fungible or non-fungible. There are, are patterns for both in Firefly. And it, is, uh, it, it doesn't actually matter which specific token contract you use. It could be uh, a vanilla off-the-shelf open Zeppelin ERC contract, whether that's uh, ERC-20, ERC-721. Uh, it could be a completely custom token contract. And uh, as long as it implements the ability to mint, transfer, and burn tokens, it, uh, and, and Firefly also has the ability for uh, token approvals as well. There are first class APIs built right into Firefly. There's a fantastic dashboard that lets you inspect everything. This is a, a little screenshot of the, the Firefly Explorer, the Firefly UI that shows uh, kind of what's going on inside this particular token pool. Uh, but there's great support for tokens right out of the box, makes it super convenient. Uh, we've had a, a lot of people come to the project and, and try it out just so that they can actually learn about tokens because P Firefly provides just a really easy on-ramp to get up and started uh, running a system, being able to, to mint some tokens, transfer them, play around with an external wallet and just understand how different token contracts works. And it's, it's been really great. Okay, um, I, I'm gonna go through these next couple of slides uh, 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 maybe a little quicker. Um, but wanted to just briefly touch on the, the Firefly core. And so the Firefly core is, uh, it, it's important, especially to, to the next part of the conversation as well, when we start talking about identity. So Firefly core is, we, we are, there's a picture of a brain in the middle of this diagram, because we often refer to it as the brain of the system. And it's sort of the, uh, it has inside it an orchestration engine that is in charge of uh, making sure Events are delivered in the correct order based on the ordering set by the blockchain so that the ordering is established by the chain. Uh, but then Firefly in the orchestration engine needs to uh, make sure that everything stays in that order as the, the, the events are presented to the application, uh, as things are uh, put in the database. And uh, it, 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 handles, uh, it handles a lot of the heavy lifting of the, the grunt work of what an application developer would normally need to build into their application to have a reliable, uh, you know, stateless Web3 app, and the the Firefly core orchestration engine takes a lot of that for them. So it's it's coordinating between things that are on chain, uh, data that's being pinned to the chain, or or tokens or events that are are coming off the chain, and and it's also coordinating that with with off chain data as well, whether that's uh, documents that are stored in IPFS, whether that's private messages that are sent directly from node to node, uh, and, and all kinds of things like that. So uh, I've touched on a couple of different places that the Firefly stores data. Uh, it has a, like I've said, it, ha it has a database that uh, Firefly stores network and chain state in. Uh, it also works with a, a shared storage system right now the the implementation for that out of the box is ipfs and uh, it also has a, a private data exchange as well uh, firefly has uh, like i said a lot of tools with it here's another screenshot of the the explorer from the dashboard uh, i've touched on uh, quite a few of these already the, the cli the api and the sdk so I, I won't belabor the point but it has a lot of tools and and they're they're really great 
Uh, they make using it easy and uh, I, I think an enjoyable experience for developers. Um, it's, it's all, like I said, cloud ready, modern distributed architecture design. Um, one of the other really cool things about it, and it will talk more about plugins here in just a little bit, is that it's it, one of the points I haven't touched on is that it's a very pluggable architecture. So uh, not only is Firefly itself distributed into many microservices, the, the orchestration engine has a really robust plugin system that allows uh, the implementation for any of those services to be swapped out. So uh, if, if you know the, the out of the box implementation of shared storage is IPFS, but if you have a specific need to uh, use a different shared storage mechanism, uh, maybe it's you know Amazon S3 or some other, uh, maybe it's some on-premise data storage system uh, that can easily be swapped out via a plugin to the Firefly core uh, to talk to a completely different storage service that sits outside of Firefly core. Um, so it's so it's both a microservice architecture and it's also a very pluggable architecture as well. Okay, so just a, a quick comment on kind of the, the roadmap of what we're working on, and uh, and then we'll segue into uh, the work on identity. Um, kind of we're working a lot right now on enhanced support for public blockchains, as well as multiple ledgers and blockchain connectors at the same time, and in different usage patterns at the same time. So I talked about kind of the, the gateway and the, the multi-party usage patterns, uh, allowing Firefly to, to operate in both of those modes at the same time uh, in different namespaces uh, with different sets of plugins. And uh, so, so all three of these active development uh, bullet points are, are very much related. So uh, I also commented on that, you know, there's, there's a lot of work going in right now to enhancing Firefly's Web3 gateway capabilities and uh, giving operators more control, more granularity of how their, uh, their, their Firefly node interacts with the rest of the blockchain world. Uh, coming up soon, uh, we're working on more samples, more SDKs, and it uh, looks like I had a duplicated bullet point. The uh, Web3 gateway was supposed to be on the left side. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, also, pluggable API security and pluggable identity management are, are coming up very soon. And uh, so those are, those are things that, that people are really excited about as well. And so speaking of pluggable identity management, I will end my, my little slideware talk here now, and I will turn it over to Peter to, to talk about that topic. That's, that's great. Um, thanks, Nico. So um, let, me, let me just share my screen um, a minute and just give you a feeling for what Firefly is first hand. Um, so if you if you stand up Firefly, um, and I do encourage you to have a look at some of the recent demos, and we can send some some of those those through afterwards. You'll see what you get um, in about five minutes, whether you choose Fabric or a private Ethereum chain, you'll, um, or maybe even connecting to a remote public chain. You'll um, you'll get a stack on your on your laptop, which is running everything you need. It's running all of the Firefly components. Um, which is a microservice architecture. Part of making it pluggable is allowing different components to be different languages. So it's um, it's running a bunch bunch of different different containers um, for you, including the blockchain, IPFS, um, uh, and, what, and, and like I say, you can you can pick your, pick your blockchain there, and also a bunch of tooling. Um, so you get a sandbox, um, which is a sort of an exerciser for blockchain constructs. Um, so being able to play with tokens, uh, create or launch your own phone, your own token on your on your laptop, transfer mint, um, mint and burn tokens, um, interact with smart contracts uh, of any description on the blockchain itself. So you've got some custom fabric chain code, you've got a custom solidity smart contract, being able to generate a REST API for that um, and interact with it. Um, and, and also um, Firefly helps you coordinate together um, the off-chain pipes that exist pretty universally um, across enterprise deployments of a, um, a business use case on blockchain, whether they're well-organized between the, between the parties as part of a sort of multi-party application that everybody's running a copy of 
and sort of the off-chain pipes are standardized between everybody who's building in that solution, or whether it's much more ad hoc. The reality is that blockchain isn't great for sensitive data um, going directly on the chain, so you need to coordinate off-chain transfer with on-chain. So that pattern, again, is all, all built into, into Firefly. Um, and you'll also find you get um, an explorer, which, uh, as Nico showed a little bit, um, gives you a, a bit of a view into, um, into the, the system. So I'm going to space there. Um, what, you, what you've done on, on, your, um, on your node lets you drill into all the different things that, that Firefly can do. And um, obviously, if you are going to be um, doing things like um, off-chain, coordinated transfer of data between different organizations. Uh, what that means is you need to know who you're exchanging data with. It's just, I you know, don't need to tell this group that that's a, that's a reality of life in the blockchain space, that um, a, a hex string of an Ethereum address is not great for business to know who they're transacting with. So, so Firefly does um, come out of the box um, when you're using it in the multi-party system mode where you're assuming everybody else is running Firefly. And I think that's an important point because Firefly as a technology does not make that, that assumption, but it does provide that as an option for you. Then it comes with a sort of built-in network map, a system of identity just out of the box inside of, inside of Firefly. So um, just before we uh, started talking, I sent, I sent a, a message that came from another party um, uh, in, the, in the system. I need to see who it, who it came from. Then um, I actually get to see the, um, the identity that came, um, that that message came in on. So if I open up the, the message here, we'll see that we represent identity in Firefly using the DID syntax. Um, and I, I want to put it that way because um, we, Firefly is itself, just like with every blockchain technology, not trying to be the full implementation of a core blockchain construct. Firefly is not a DLT. It lets you plug into Fabric, Ethereum, even there's Corda, Corda support there. Um, uh, connect to all of those remote blockchains that you might be connecting to. Even things as varied as Bitcoin are, connect, are you know, fit into the pattern of Firefly. Um, Off-chain pipes, well, maybe you're using, you know, just the open source mutual TLS connectivity peer-to-peer. -peer. Maybe you're using a queuing technology like RabbitMQ or NATS or, or, um, or Kafka um, or a JMS provider, where all of that can, can plug in. So that was the reason for choosing DID to be the way that we represent an identity of something that you've received, in this particular case, a piece of broadcast data that was pinned to the blockchain with a blockchain transaction of the hash. As with all sensible solutions, the data itself didn't go onto the blockchain, the data itself, in this case, for broadcast, went into IPFS. But my Firefly node is telling me it's done verification that it's from this author. And, and what does that actually mean? Well, in this case, it's using the built-in identity system of the of multi party system of Firefly. And that is the only option today. And I think that's a really interesting thing we can get to in a, in a minute or so when we sort of have a bit of a discussion. Um, at the built-in identity system. And um, so there's a um, there's a, a you know a DID resolver that we've just picked of, of, of Firefly to say, look, this is the built-in resolver inside of inside of Firefly itself. Um, and if you go to the network map, you'll see that there are these sort of constructs like organizations, nodes, and custom identities, which I don't have um, any of, which are a um, which are a a simple um, built-in uh, with a sort of profile way of advertising your identity within the network, which is um, backed by performing a simple verification using a key. Um, and I don't have an example of it here, but if there was uh, a child identity, like I created a custom identity, then it wouldn't just be the identity you would, um, you would have had to, the, the key that you're using yourself to prove 
um, that you have ownership of, there would also be a verification by whoever you're saying is the, is the next identity up the tree. So a very simple system, you know, a, a lot like a PKI system where there are some root identities in the system that are trusted because they just established themselves um, through sort of a gatekeeper construct, they came on board. And then a claim and verification system to generate other identities where you need one transaction on the blockchain from the parent um, to say they, they attest to your claim and you need the claim itself. And, you know, a pretty simple, simple solution. But what really makes this sort of interesting is with a fully pluggable architecture, why not have other resolvers, right? Why not have um, Firefly in much more sort of in that gateway mode where you're just connecting to ecosystems that exist? where some of the members are getting the acceleration of using a stack of technology like Firefly, other of the members you know, maybe built everything from scratch and really want to use the lowest level technologies and being able to join that community and participate in it using a sort of middleware stack that makes it much easier for you to connect your applications and core systems to it. Well, that would mean you'd need to work with whatever the identity system is of that group of participants. So that's why we chose the idea. We're not choosing DID because we want to be a self-sovereign identity provider. We're choosing DID because um, we want to be a accelerator for solutions, regardless of what technology choices they've made in the blockchain space. Um, and that means that um, projects where there is a, a self-sovereign identity system or other identity system involved that's backed by DID, being able to plug that in and say, don't resolve this inside of Firefly with the multi-party system built-in thing. Resolve this using the plugin. And the plugin doesn't need to be, you know, just because maybe Firefly core is Go, it doesn't need to be rewritten in Go, right? That can be any existing system. If it's got APIs, if it conforms to the standard, it can be it can be plugged it can be plugged in. So sorry, I, I talked quite a bit there, but I really wanted to give that flavour of sort of what it is, but also what it isn't for this community because um, I didn't want to give any impression that what we tried to do is you know that there's I think there's a great synergy with projects like Ares and um, and Indie and Software, um, not a uh, not a contention with them. This is this is about um, an accelerator um, that helps, particularly focused on enterprise projects, go faster in Web3. Um, it's not seeking to replace any of the technologies, whether that's the DLT layer or technologies like IPFS and private data transfer and self sovereign identity systems. So I will pause there and um, I, I hope maybe there's some questions. I wonder is is Firefly new to, to some people on the on the call or is this is this mainly been a recap? Hey Peter, there looks like a couple of questions in the chat. I would just throw that out to you. Yeah, and just just to answer your question, um, this is Kyle Robinson. Um, Firefly is new to me, um, and I'm still not sure I understand what it even is. Um, I've been in the indie Aries space, and so I'm trying to see if it how it equates to something in that world. Um, and I and I maybe don't have it yet, so. <laughs> okay, let, let, me, let me try again. And Nico, maybe you could bring up the chart that's got the, the layers of stuff that you would need to build yourself if you didn't have Firefly. Sure, yep. let me pull that back up. So, 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 so you're, you're, you're a developer, um, you, you understand JavaScript, React, um, you know, um, Java microservices, and um, you're pulled into a team and you're told, um, right, the next project's going to use Web3 technologies. Um, and it's still going to be an enterprise project. It's still going to be, um, it's still going to need to pass all security reviews. It's still, still going to um, need to be done, done with all of the standards that, that we've got, but it's going to be a blockchain project. And maybe it's a new one and you're building a new use case on Web3 um, and you're going to be collaborating with a bunch, of, a bunch of other companies to build it. Maybe there's an existing thing that's out there like some tokens, some digital assets, 
um, a, an identity system. Um, and it's already there. It's been built for the last five years. And, and the, the project is your company integrating with it, you know, launching a launching a new digital digitized piece of value or um, performing a um, uh, you know, some 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 a collaboration with a, a DAO that exists um, out there. Right. And what do you do? do? Is the first thing you need to do go and learn? Solidity and JSON RPC and what you know how OLP encoding works and how how to um, deal with the you know streaming like polling for events and re recovering and doing checkpoint recovery on event streams and um, how to you know work out how to go from an ABI to a piece of code that can invoke something reliably at scale and deal with key management. Is that what your, your next six months is going to be? Is learning all of that and maybe at the end you'll get to, okay, now we can actually write some business logic. Or is there a stack out there where I can start with the business logic? The blockchain stuff's just as easy, right? I, I, when, I'm, when I'm doing database applications, I don't, I don't learn how to write the database or, you know, in order to, to, to use it. I, just, I just, just start building my application in a framework that understands how to integrate databases. I use a, you know, I, I use a, a library that lets me connect to the database and, and, and away I go and, and it behaves well and, and I can do it at scale and, and it's reliable. And, and what we see, I mean, it was patently true when, when, when um, you know, a number of people who have been involved in Firefly sort of since its original inception, um, you know, four to five years ago was the projects would spend 80% of their time on the plumbing. It was astonishing how much time was spent just doing the low level plumbing pieces and not on the blockchain. And the so, fact that there were all of these projects that were able to help at the DLT layer, but nothing that helps the application developer get APIs that do what they need them to do was really surprising. So trying to make this an open, pluggable way to provide APIs at the level developers need, particularly enterprise developers, and um, deals with those really hard plumbing pieces in a way that there's, you know, it's done in the open. It's, it's not so much a standard driven approach, but more a driven through adoption approach. Um, to, to have a reliable set of building blocks and rather a set of sort of middleware to build on top of. D does that make a little bit more sense? I, I, I understand what you're saying. I'm just not um, kind of lining up with what I know. Um, and I think part of, the, part of it is, um, I don't know, and, and maybe others can correct me, is we don't really have a concept of a Web3 app in 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 the Aries, we have wallets that do exchanges with verifiable credentials, and you know maybe somebody's got a mobile version of a wallet or an enterprise version of a wallet that does that exchange, um, but not necessarily an app. Um, yeah, maybe, uh, do you have an example of one of the apps that's been built using the Firefly framework? Yeah, so I guess when you look at the enterprise participation in a network where there is um, a, a decentralized identity, think about the enterprise that's deciding, do I, do I, do I attest to, to a claim that somebody's made? Um, I, I, wanna, I, want, I want to build an enterprise system as a, you know, a piece of the government or a university with a large IT organization, security standards have to think about roles and integration to IAM systems rather than rather than just end users, like right? just you directly with keys on their on their on their on their phones. Um, building a system that you know needs to run at scale. There's, I, I believe there will be a thick application stack with sophistication on like where are the keys stored, which you can assign the attestations where. Where, um, where's, what's the system of record to know what I have and haven't done? How do I rich query that to see 
uh, somebody saying you were tested to my identity on this on this date. Um, did we really do that? Did we not? That, that kind of um, enterprise system, in my experience, tends to be really quite a thick application stack. It's not just a, not just a Web3 library inside of a running on a browser on a phone. But uh, so, so that's the kind of you know place I would think it would fit into the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and I think I I see the value in it. I just I'm I'm trying to see its uh, interoperability or applicability to to what we're doing. But I I've said enough, asked enough well, questions. Well, I, I think we're close to time. Into this discussion. Yeah. So we were asked to, to to come to this one to, to yeah, sort yeah. of gather really. Um, so. We yeah, didn't no, come good. in yeah. with any with preconceived ideas that like this is the exact place where it would or it wouldn't fit. Um, and, yeah. and, and maybe the answer is that the projects right now, this sort of enterprise integration, um, sort of repeatable being able to build solution stack is just not where the community's at. Uh, and if that's the answer, it's not it's not a concern from our perspective. Right, and I'm not trying to sh shut anything down. I'm just trying to to see where it might fit. <laughs> That's great. Thanks, Carl. Yeah. I, I have a question. This 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 Fire, Firefly uh, framework really reminds me very much of Hyperledger Composer. Uh, a few years ago, uh, IBM tried to build a framework on top of Fabric. They wanted to make it uh, blockchain agnostic. They were providing all the APIs to try and make life simpler for application developers, and it failed miserably, uh, ultimately because they just couldn't keep up with the vast rate of change of all the different fabric SDKs and everything else. If I've understood correctly, you're trying to do that plus Ethereum and Quarter and whatever other underlying blockchain. So my worry would be for, for, for you guys, how are you going to keep up with all the different underlying blockchain sort of APIs because you're building a layer on top of that. So is, is that something that, is that a concern or have I got that wrong? Yeah, I think so. I, I was, I was, uh, this is Jam. Uh, I was part of the, the team that was helping to build the uh, Composer um, uh, when I was IBM. Uh, the problem with Composer was number one, it's, it, it's sort of ahead of its time. Number two, the, the, the fatal uh, flaw with Composer's philosophy is it's a very heavy handed approach. Uh, you start with their DSL and then you compile it into a bunch of components that are in the end is quite cumbersome to iterate. Like when you, the problem with generating stuff is when you need to make some changes, everything needs to be redeployed. Uh, and it's, it's trying to um, sort of solve the same problem of adoption, making blockchains easier for the, for the application, application developers. But, Composer just took the, the, the wrong approach that makes adoption really hard. And, and it's not trying to solve the problem of how do we design the, the on-chain logic of, of blockchain applications. Um, it's trying to solve the problem of someone's going to have to build all of these layers anyway. Can they plug them into a framework and do less coding, still working in the language that they're working in, um, if they need to add connectivity to, a, to an ecosystem that's not supported. Um, so to, to just overall reduce the, the load um, on the developer. So it's a slightly, slightly different approach to trying to say, look, model your application in this world. It's, not, it's nothing like a DAML would be, for example. Right? It's no one, not like that at all. It's about saying it's there. The blockchain specialist has built it the way that they've built it. Now I need to integrate with it. I need a REST API for it. I need event streams from it. I need it to work for me. Um, uh, and and, and those, those layers, building them from scratch is the only other option that's out there at the moment. And it's thousands of lines of code per project. Um, so I, I, I think it's a really, like, we smile because I, I think it's a really interesting um, comparison, um, but, but there is, there is a different approach, I think, to Firefly than to, to the Composer. And it's trying to address a slightly different layer of the stack. Yeah, I get that. that, that we could talk all night and we're running out of time. So I, I remember three or four years ago, we built some Composer stuff. And I, I was, you know, you probably know Dan Selman and the only IBM guys. Yeah, that I yeah we know him well. 
I met Dan at uh, Hyperledger Global Forum in Basel, actually, and, and, and in Phoenix, funny enough, and he was telling me all the same stuff you've been telling me. Uh, and the worry is that, you know, the same thing will happen, that we built all the stuff in Composer, now we're going to be on the Firefly, then Firefly isn't there anymore. And it's like, oh, what do we do now? Because there was a lot of very, uh, shall we say, disappointed people in Basel that I was speaking to who built some really cool stuff using Composer. I do accept your point about it's a, it's a different beast and all that, but uh, that would be my that would be my concern. Anyway, um, we'll have to leave it there, I guess, Char, because we're, we're running out of time here. Yeah, yeah, sorry, we're... Going over a little bit, is it okay if I ask one more question? I uh, I know that there are people, I'm sure, who will watch the recording who can benefit from these, even if a lot of people have had to hop off. Um, but I, I was just curious, is there a limit to how many blockchains can be plugged in at a time? Um, in 1.0, which is um, generally available and is what you get if you if you run the stack, um, you know, you just just you use the tooling and stand stand up the stable version on your laptop. You get one below, um, and there um, you can plug in multiple blockchains to a node, but only with tokens. You you can't just plug them in at a raw level. Have lots of different blockchains on one on one Firefly node, and um, that is changing. Um, it, it has already changed in the main line of the code. So that um, these there's namespace constructs inside of Firefly, and you can have lots of different namespaces. And each of those namespaces can use a bunch of different plugins. And that doesn't just include the, 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 the blockchain plugin. So you could have a different blockchain plugin. And if we didn't know, if we went further with the identity plugin, you have a different identity plugin for that namespace. And your application could connect to all those different namespaces and integrate with all those different, those different blockchains. So, so there's two parts of the questions. Right now, today, there's a limitation of one, but it's not architectural, and it's already gone in the main line, and we'll be rolling into the next minor release when that comes out. Ah, great, great. Thanks for thanks for walking me through that. Um, looks like looks like Jim St. Clair had to drop the off the call before asking his question, but maybe he'll be able to follow up with you after. Um, but anyway, that was a great discussion. Apologies for going over time, but I'm glad we had so many good questions. Um, thanks, Nico, Jim, and Peter for such a great presentation and demo. Uh, really appreciate you being here today. Well, thanks. thanks so much for inviting us along. Great. Awesome. Well, and to everybody watching the recording, thanks for joining, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all again in two weeks. All right, have a great day, thanks. You too, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.